Today we're gonna do a tutorial on how to do a temper fade on a 360 wave. So first we're gonna take down the hair all around using the one guard, going with the grain. Always use your comb to find out which direction the hair is going. And then you follow the patterns all the way through. The clipper and the comb should be one. As you cut hair, you should always comb the hair right behind it. Yeah, um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram also, Sneed underscore the barber. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you tuning into the videos. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't mind the guy in the back, you know, he's just practicing his basketball moves. As you can see, this is, um, you know what I mean? I do my tutorials live. It's not staged. So pretty much live clientele. But, you know. As you can see in this video, I switch hands left hand and right hand. Pretty much ambidextrous when I'm cutting hair. It's just like a basketball player using the left hand and the right hand, so it helps you out. Now we're gonna draw a guide and start the temp fade from the temper peak point all the way to the air. And we're gonna draw it with the clipper open. Then we're gonna take the one guard, close it up, go behind the air. We're actually, um, we're using a lot of corner work behind that blade. Then we take the one and a half guard go right behind that and then we're gonna knock out this fade it's pretty much one two three um, not like these other barbers using a million clips to do a temper fade then we're gonna take the half guard and we're gonna clean up that fade a little clip over comb saves you time then we're gonna go to the back we're gonna draw our guard the same way Clipper open, no guard. As you can see, I'm going with the grain of the hair. His hair goes grows pretty much in a lot of direction on the back, so that's why I flip the clip upside down and do that. Then we take the one guard and we do what we did on the um, first side with the temper fade. We're going to close it up a little bit and get that line out. Then we're gonna take the one and a half guard, close it up. As we go high on the head, though, we open the guard up. So I'm switching it while I'm going. It's kind of like you know driving a car. You don't really look while you switch from gas to brake. But the, when I'm on the line, I close up the guard, and when I'm going high into the air, into the hair, um, I just open it up a little bit more. Give you more room for error. A little clip over comb in between that. So finishing up the back, tapering it out. Now we're gonna go to the other side. We're gonna draw a guard, same thing. Clip or open, no guard from the air to the temple peak point. Going different directions, lighting it, light up the fade underneath. Then we're gonna take the one guard, we're gonna, you know, cut on the angle, use the angle of the blade and get the bulk out from underneath. So we're gonna pretty much knock out this fade pretty much easy, like one, two, three. Always use your comb. And I always have a comb in my hand, so it's, if I don't cut with a comb, I feel like something's missing. Then we're gonna take the half guard, open it up first on the angle like we started with the one. Use your comb always. A lot of corner work with the blade. 
Then we're gonna take the clip off. We're gonna use the raw, the raw blade to clean up that fade. Adjust it as you go. See a lot, a lot of the corner of the blade. So that's how you gotta do these tapers, man. Because if you use the full blade, you're just gonna put another line in the tape up, and then you're gonna be working all day. Then we're gonna proceed to blend in the bed into the tapered area. First we started with the clipper itself, no guard. Then we switched to the one, opened it up, the little clip, the clip over comb. We're gonna debulk the front area of his hair because it have like a whirlpool in the front where it's got that swirl. So pretty much you're gonna go against it and you know, cutting in the direction of the swirl. And we use a bigger clip just to give ourselves some room for error. So you don't take it too low. So you always want to taper down the front line so when you get ready to do your line and you hit it with the clipper, the line is crispy. We're gonna blend out the other bed into the faded area. And shout out to all my followers on the um, YouTube channel and also man, I appreciate the support. I appreciate all the feedback. Now, when you first start, when you start in the line a person up, you always start from the front of the line. You want to find the balance on the front line, so, and then you work your way to out. So, you start from the middle and you work your way out on both sides. It's called a professional pushback. Don't let the customer tell you that, oh yeah, you've been pushing my hair back. Well, I have to, because your hair does not grow naturally straight. Everybody has imperfections in their hair. So me being the professional that I am, I gotta push your shit back professionally. We're gonna slip in the half moon part also while we doing the, um, the hairline. Then we're gonna start with the side. After you, you always do the front, then you do the sides. Get that nice and sharp. You're only as good as your tools also, man. So the sharper your tools, the better your, the better your day is at the office. Your tools is dull, you're gonna have a hard time all day lining up. So you, you see, you see, I always try to look at the other side, make sure I'm matching them up. So when you turn a customer to the mirror, the line is straight and the sides is pretty much the same length. It's no such thing as perfect, but you could get close to it. Shaping at the back, nice quick line. Line is cut like butter, baby. Now we're gonna do the bed. So you always start with the back line first. Then underneath, you always start from the middle of the bed and work yourself, work, work right on out. It's same same philosophy as the hairline so you make sure you get the middle nice and even and then you work use that as your guide and work on uh, clean up underneath the neck make sure you don't want the customer to take off their shirt and 
you take off the cape and then a bunch of hair is underneath their neck. Stuff like that. Because when they go home, their girlfriend points stuff like that out. So, you got to make sure to get them nice and clean for the ladies. Now, when you're doing the sides, you always do like the top of the bed. Not the top of the bed, but you do like the top. And then I usually do the mustache. Shape that up. Get that nice and sharp. And then I always mark where I want where I want the the bed to end. And then I'm gonna connect the middle. Now I'm gonna connect the middle from the, from where I started at, where the, where the taper was, and I'm gonna just make that one line now. So pretty much it's easy work. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, back line. Then I'm, then I'm gonna go draw that line right there by the, by the tape up. Then I'm gonna do the mustache. Measure it out. Keep looking at both sides. Make sure they match. Then I'm gonna make sure I'm draw where I wanted to start at. Right there. Get that nice and straight. Turn the customer to the side. Now we're gonna connect the lines. We're gonna bridge it together. One, two, three. That's without the razor. Sometimes I use shave gel, but when, you know, when I'm in, not in a rush, but save some time, spray a little alcohol on the customer just to get the surface nice and moist and then, you know, draw your razor. Not, not every customer you could do the alcohol on. Some people, do, they break out on the hairline, so you have to use something like a, a gel or, you know, something like a Easy Blade, something like that. But I like using alcohol sometimes because, you know, it gets the surface dries quick and then we can get to that, that uh, chalky line faster. You always pull the skin when you tape, when you join your razor, just to smoothen out the surface a little bit more. Turn customer, pull the skin, pull your razor, just like that. You want, to con you want to control the razor too because you don't want to push the hairline back because you, you can't control your razor. So I'm stretching the skin while I'm drawing my razor and shaving. Giving them that crispy line. Don't worry, my hands is clean. I wash my hands about 20 times a day. And I don't smoke cigarettes, so... My hands don't smell like cigarettes when my fingers is close to the customer nose all the time. And you sometimes a customer grows hair by their eyes, so you always want to raise up that area also, make it look nice and clean.
Now I'm going to take my masters with the fade blade. I'm going to open it about halfway. And I'm going to just glide it across the top of the season. Pretty much catching all the loose ends. So when the customer get out the chair, it's no hair sticking up. So pretty much you finishing off the haircut. Because that's the difference between a good barber and a great barber. The haircut is just a lot cleaner. And you know, you might think it's camera tricks, but it's pretty much cleaning up the work. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, man. You know, don't just be watching these videos. You know, subscribe so when I drop the new videos, it comes automatically in your email. And you can check them out so you'll be on top of things. And follow me on Instagram, Sneed underscore the barber. And that's D-A-B-A-R-B-E-R. All right, and uh, Strictly Skills Barbershop also have an Instagram page that you can follow. So it's Strictly Skills Barbershop, one word, and that's Strictly with a K. Yeah, but um, I mean, I like to do live videos. I don't like to just, you know what I mean? I mean, some some haircuts I might have to tell people like, yo, I'm doing this type of haircut and I need this type of model. But besides that, I like the live clientele type style. So as they come in, if they want a haircut that I feel needs video in, then I, I turn the video on. But I never did a, a wave cut before with the tape up. So that's why I did this video. But, you know, nevertheless, the customer's happy. I hope you happy. And um, see y'all next time, man. It's been good seeing you again. All right. Don't forget comment, feedback. I want to hear everything. Whether you like the video or not, good, good criticism, bad criticism. You know, maybe I need to get my game a little tighter. You can never stop learning. All right. Peace out.